And um, I just want to touch, like touch, you mentioned Virgil, um, everyone's feedback on him was that he was just so genuine and caring, right? So absolutely. how did that news affect you and how were your interactions with him personally? Yeah, I mean, I was just completely in shock, you know, like I, I, I'm probably many, many, probably like everyone, like didn't ha ha have a clue. And, um, you know, I hadn't been in like super touch with him. I ran into him in London like a few years back and went to his DJ gig and just like, you know, like he came out and said hi and we were just talking and I was just talking about how, you know, inspired I was. It was like, it was during that first uh, Louis Vuitton show, that kind of that oh. year. And, and I was just telling him how literally like mine, I kind of went back after I saw that and went into the interviews and kind of connected all the dots back to what he was doing when, because we were kind of, you know, working together tangentially. It was this all the same crew. It was like a bit of a smaller inner circle at that time, you know, like between Virgil, Plain Pat, like it started to grow, like his design thing. But like, yeah, he was, I was just like, man, you're just such an inspiration. He's like, man, so are you. He's like, we're the same blood. And we're, he's just, he's just like the most humble, like not in a, in a, in a bad sense, in, in the best sense, you know, magnanimous, like you just, like a regal just person that just was an advocate for everyone and just really just, I mean, just what a special person, you know, I'm just like, it's, it's, it's such a loss and, and just shocking that that happened. But I mean, I guess he, he really left his mark on the world too. Right. right so sure. that's, uh, and all the inspiration he's, he's brought forth is, uh, you know, his spirit really truly lives on, right. uh, I think. Totally, I agree. Um, just going back to when you were the replacement uh, keyboardist, I remember the Glow in the Dark tour. I remember the shirts with yep. the lines and the glasses. Oh my gosh, that was iconic. But were you nervous taking the stage? You know, that's a, and what was Kanye like in that point of his career? Yeah, um, was not nervous, but, um, I mean, especially because you know it was it was I was it was really exciting to um, feel the trust that Kanye kind of had in me. You know, like going into that, it was the first time that I'd even be like, "Oh wow!" Like as a whole aesthetic. Like I remember we were at the Ellen show. We were going to do Love Lockdown, and they had this like set that was like. Uh, a rapper set, like with their idea <laughs> of what a rapper set should be. Right. I think it was like a chain link fence and like, it looked like a prison. It's like, right. like, like black people prison equated. Like I was like, and I kind of texted him and I was like, I don't know if you're going to dig this set that oh, they wow. got going on. And he was like, handle it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I got a new gig as a set designer. Oh my you know, God. it's cool. And they have all their stuff in the back. And we changed it up and I kind of explained to them the aesthetic of with the Tyco drums and the, you know, the aesthetic of 808s and Heartbreak and we redesigned it. So like being in that environment, like it's just like really exciting actually. And, you know, by that point, like, I mean, I came from like a tradition of like, I was doing like jazz gigs playing like four hours a night, like three, wow. three nights a week for five years. So doing like a 90 minute show, it's kind of, of like the same music every night is quite like, um, doing the show was like really exhilarating and fun, but, uh, I wouldn't get nervous doing that necessarily. And then also like creating the shows right. were so fun to, to do that when we'd sit in the arena or sit in the studio and create those shows and watch kind of Kanye kind of paint his picture, you know, of, uh, his painting of what was going to go down and, and the Jim Henson dragon that never worked and all these things that went wrong and, and watching him just kind of like make the mistakes, but then craft the show into this special thing. It was always like amazing and inspiring to watch. That's amazing. At what point did he ask you to be music director? Was that after the tour? Was that a certain number of shows in? Uh, it was, kind of, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a funny story because, you know, like, when they did the run, we did the, we did the first run and then, then we were going to do Glow in the Dark, right? And I, and I don't know if it came from like the label or, or where, but they were like, I think you need like a bigger band. You need like a, you know, a, a larger 
Ben and they brought in um, the incredible music director, um, Adam Blackstone, who is like a legend, you know, in that world. And he didn't know me and he was kind of like, um, uh, uh, well, I have my own keyboard play, you know, I'm not, I don't need that. I don't know, but, but we'll, we'll try him out. You know, that was kind of actually how it went down. And I was like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll try me out. And, but at that point I had already established like a vibe with Kanye through doing the, um, you know, sometimes in the shows we started doing like, he would have a track, drop the track out and it would just be silence and it would just be me and Kanye. So we had started you know, establishing like a connection musically, which is kind of what led to 808s and Heartbreaks is where we would just play piano and do a melody, you know, and it was so, I think those guys like through no, no weakness or anything of their own, they're all like incredibly talented guys that Adam brought in and Adam is like par excellence, like one of the best MDs in the game, but they didn't, they weren't, they, they didn't know what the aesthetic was. So they were kind of coming in like it was like a normal thing. Kanye West's world is not a normal, it's not about being normal, it's about elevating, pioneering, innovating, right? So I think the, after like a couple of days, Kanye came in to hear what they had been working on and he wasn't exactly happy with it and just left the room and was like, just listen to Jeff. So I kind of became the oh, co- wow co-music director with Adam, which went great, you know, and then Adam kind of caught on quickly. I mean, to, to their defense, you know, it's like you, you, it takes, it takes a while to, to like embrace or understand the aesthetic that Kanye's going. Mm -hmm. I remember the drummer, uh, Spanky used as an incredible drummer. He had like a gong and a hundred drums around him and a drum kit and he's playing brrr, like yeah. a virtuoso and Kanye was like, mm -mm, like play this bongo. And that's it because it was like, yeah, this isn't the wedding band version of Kanye West. It's like, we don't want to hear like a drummer playing this hip hop. Like we would play, we'd put the beat on the playback and then accentuate it kind of like in an orchestra, how the percussion accentuates the music right. rather than drives the, the, the beat uh, from the drum kit. You right. know, it's a, it's a, it's a mod, hip hop's a modern aesthetic, right? There's no right. drum kit. Right. You can go back to that, but, finding the right balance of what the band could provide. So, I mean, all that stuff, I mean, that's just like one small example of like, um, how Kanye would kind of always find a, a way to elevate or innovate um, in the situation. But that was kind of the moment, you know, when it was like, okay, I'm officially, and then he'd kind of call me to like, check in on like, what's going on right. there, you know, like, how's it sounding? And I was like, mm, you know, you know, work on this. And I was like, that was, I think it's like the first time I got to call. I was like, from a number I didn't know. And I answered, it's like, <laughs> hey, it's Kanye. And I'm like, mm, heart rate accelerating, <laughs> you know, but it's great. You know, that was kind of the beginning of a, of an awesome long collaboration that Definitely. included multiple world tours, European tours, long stints in Hawaii, working on those Watch albums and, and, um, you know, like, uh, kind of a mentorship and friendship that kind of lives on to this day. That's how I kind of mentioned Donda. It's awesome. It kind of comes full circle because I've been on my own journey also after I left and, you know, kind of told him I didn't want to be in the band anymore because I was becoming a successful producer in my own right. Like right. I did Try Sleep With The Broken Heart was kind of like one of the first records I did on my own. Um, and pretty quickly, you know, it's like, it's pretty grueling being in like a touring band. Like at that point, it was an awesome opportunity, but that, that kind of like hurt us for a second. I think you right. maybe felt like I was like trying to bail out on the situation, but I also had to do what was right for me and right. my career to move forward. And I, in a way thought that's kind of like what he would do, right. right? He didn't want to keep being the producer in Rockefeller. He wanted to become a rapper and then he didn't want to just be a rapper. He wanted to go on to be a fa fashion icon, multi-hyphenate genius, you know, like, so I consider him my mentor and I, I was just kind of trying to follow the the blueprint, right. uh, no pun intended, yeah. uh, that he laid out, you know, right. like to keep growing, keep expanding your horizons, um, embrace your, conquer your shyness, embrace your flyness. There's an right. awesome book he wrote called uh, Thank You and You're Welcome that has all these Kanye-isms in it that, <laughs> 
are all very um, inspiring. And and that was kind of the, yeah, the beginning of my coming into my own as a, as a super producer, like doing like the fun album soon after that. And that one, like, you know, song of the year and best new, they were best new artist, and, um, you know, and then, and then on and on just doing my own thing as a producer. But I always, I always love coming back to Kanye when I get the call and, and just soak up some of that energy and, and always just, you know, he's, to me, he's the greatest living artist and, and one of the greatest artists of, you know, the last of all time, really, you know, but, but he, we're just, he's just head and shoulders above anyone else in culture, like just doing, creating art and beauty and, and philosophic, like being a philosopher, you know, like questioning why we're here and what we're meant to be doing here and is you know coming back into his faith and all that stuff kind of all goes together i think totally. it's, it's just so inspiring definitely how often do you get the call yeah i mean i think before this it was like the coachella right. uh performance and and uh you know so that was a couple of years it was kind of a covid and you know, i actually i think there was like some time in Wyoming, you know, maybe once a year it kind of rings up you know before that was like kids see ghosts and right. went out to wyoming and did something so I mean, he kind of calls in all the troops yeah. whenever he's got something important. Everyone that's kind of uh, in his Rolodex of of geniuses that he calls in to come together and and creates this like scene and this positive vibe that's going on. Um, so yeah, I'm. I, I'm it's awesome to be in that in that group and in that class of people. 